in this episode tonight. Coming up, it's more chat about football. Hello, here we are again, Michael. Hello, he's there. Here there again. he is. There he is. Yes, uh, welcome. Um, uh, here we are, Call Town TV on the YouTube channel. And uh, if you've watched us before and you like this kind of nonsense, hey, why don't I hit the like button, subscribe button, and the reminder button? Very much indeed. Yes, and right. for the guy that put the comment on YouTube. We're getting comments. Yep. Was it a good one? Uh, no. Oh. Uh -huh. Michael looks like a dead man. Get him to take the headphones off Chuck. Get him to take the headphones off Chuck. Yeah. What? He didn't use any punctuation. <laughs> what a tube. Anyway, YouTube. Um, yeah, how are we today? Are we all right? We're all good, Chuck. Yeah, Excellent. we're. Let's, uh, let's get on. We're uh, ready to uh, rumble, rock and roll. Not, um, uh, huge game this weekend away at Harbour Town. Who? Harbour Town. Market Harbour, the county, uh, the town over the road. Uh, big, big. I don't know. Local. It's not a derby, is it? Can't be a derby. They're in a completely different county. Of course it's a derby. Ah, it's only... Well, it, it, we, we do know that Market Harbour is only about eight mile away, but the ground that they're playing on is about 15 mile away. It's the other side of Market Harbour. Um, why, have they, why have they taken the word market out of the word Harbour Town? I don't know. Market Harbour Town. Anyway, there you go. They play in yellow and black and will be, and I know this, uh, will be playing in all blue on Saturday afternoon, so uh, you'll be able to watch it here. And Harbour, um, Harbour do play in all yellow. Do they? Yeah. Black I think, trim, I, isn't it? I think they've dropped the black, if I, uh, if my memory serves me right. If I'm wrong, sorry. All yellow? I think. What, some sort of canary colour? I think. God. Yeah, hey. I think they do. So anyway, um, we'll all be there. There's, uh, if you haven't got a ticket, uh, don't go. But, of course, you'll be watching this after the fact. So um, we'll wait and see with bated breath how that goes. Uh, of course, as we said in the last podcast, after the uh, performance against Bedworth, it wasn't particularly good, was it? No, nope. that... and I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, it wasn't great. No. And, and I'm not going to poke him to prove that point. So, nope. um, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And there's not been much else happening on, on the football field either because there's been... It's been, the weather's been horrible. Here we are mid-March, uh, unless you're in Stamford, and then it's mid-Lent, because that's the mid-Lent Stamford Fair at the moment, <laughs> isn't it? The mid-Lent Stamford Fair. All right. Happening okay. in the streets. Um, finishes this weekend. Um, but if you, uh, yeah, if you're doing that and going around the town, and, and it's been awful, isn't it, weather-wise? Yeah, it's not been great. Um, I know the night all the tickets sold out, the youth team were going to be in action, um, and as per usual, the game was called off. So, it's a lot pitch, so they haven't played. The ladies haven't played. So, yeah. But the first team will play this weekend because it's a 4G pitch. Plastic pitch, um, which doesn't sound as good as Plastic Fox, which is a song by uh, um, uh, a bloke called Mick Arctic. And now... Um, there has been some news at Steel Town, uh, Steel Town, Steel Corbin Town this week, hasn't there? I don't know, is it? Yeah. The uh, uh, position of full-time ladies' manager has been awarded to Phil Let Toon. Let me guess. Phil Toon. Phil Toon. Who uh, has taken on the ladies uh, as a full-team manager and uh, results have shown that he's doing a good job. They have indeed, yes. Um, he's got them into, I think at the moment, actually, they're probably top of the league. Um, although they've played one game more than the team below them. But uh, there's a massive game coming up in a few weeks where they will play Crick, who have been unbeaten, and they play them here at Steel Park. And that'll be a Sunday afternoon kickoff, two o'clock kickoff, I would imagine. Two o'clock kickoff, yeah, here at Steel Park. Hopefully the weather will hold out and we'll be all good to go. There you go. So get up here, support the ladies. Why not? Indeed, they seem to be doing a great job. Um, how unbeaten under Phil? Yeah, I and think if that's you're fair to say. Really keen. They're away this Sunday at Daventry. Sorry for kicking that. 
Um, yeah, they're away at Daventry, uh, Elder Stubbs. And that's uh, that'll be on grass, will it? It will be, but yeah, it, as we all are. know, Daventry is um, um, heavy clay pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, hold your breath on that one. Yeah, so check the press for details and all the social media channels too and see what happens there. Um, so obviously it's the same case with the uh, youth team. It is indeed, yeah. The youth team have found it uh, obviously difficult. They've got eight league games left, the same as when you know we spoke last. Um, Russian and Diamonds actually managed to play a game, which is a rarity. Now they're only a point or two points behind Corby with two games in hand. So it, it is getting rather tight towards the top. Although uh, Blackstones and Kettering have played a number of games more than either of them. And Stamford, who have top, they played more games as well. So um, it's going to be an interesting end to the season. It would be useful if you had a 4G pitch just for Corby to train on, for the ladies to play on, for the youth team to play on, and the other teams that Corby Town have up here, because uh, they could probably make some money out of it as well, couldn't they? Yeah, they would. Um, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Maybe if the, you could wave a, wave a magic wand, maybe the cage. Mm. Yeah. Where they play and train. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes Maybe. you don't know, do you? Um, as for other things, obviously, uh, there was a comment on the socials this week about the bricks. They're thinking there's not as many bricks being built or bought for the wall, the black and white wall. So, if you haven't put your uh, your, your, your thoughts on that, uh, into uh, Eugene, who's buying the bricks and putting that up during the close season, get in now, get in there quickly. Uh, there's not many games left here at Steel Park, I think it's only 10 games left, is it? Um, or 10 games left to the end of the season, of which probably only five are going to happen here at Steel Park. Four, I think. Is it that bad? We've yeah. got one at the end of this month. One, Our next home We're, game here is um, versus Walls All Wood. Walls All Wood, yeah. It's the only home game we've got this month. And then in the final month of the season, I think we've got three games at home and two away. I know two of the home games are against Gresley and Cambridge City. Cambridge City, that's on Bank Holiday Monday. That yep. will be the, uh, I believe it's the 3rd of uh, April. Yeah. It might be the 3rd. Yep. Um, because we're away on the 30th of March. That is at Anstey. Anstey, no. Mate. Mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> but of course, uh, I haven't seen, they haven't played in a very long time apart from away fixtures. That's correct. Yeah, um, yeah. So they must be uh, they must be kind of staggering to put a game on because what happened there their 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 ground is right next to a river. It's flooded and um, it was certainly a couple of foot underwater, wasn't it? It was all up and standing everywhere. Yeah. Um, so that game that we played at Anstey, when they kind of turned us over, they were quite a physical team on mm. their hillside pitch. Um, you know, it, it's, it seems a, an odd place to get to. This is the other side of Leicester. Um, you know, we, we got there and, and I can't see that pitch particularly well holding up. I think it's going to be... Are you dancing? Yes. Are you listening to music in your No, headphones? I'm not dead. No, no. <laughs> There's a song there uh, by Monty Python from the movie Spamalot uh, and from the musical Spamalot. Um <laughs> I'm not dead yet, I think it's called. Now, um, so yeah, we've got to go back to Anstey. Um, yeah, that's going to be a tough game as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, away at Anstey no meds. And uh, I think we've got an away game set on Coalfield. That, that's a ground, isn't it? That's a ground. It's a big old unit of a ground. And uh, it's nice to watch the trains if you're up in the stand above the above the pitch. Um, you can watch the trains go off in the, in, in the distance, kind of like that. We Which like team trains. used to ground share with Sutton Coldfield Town? And Corby played them there. Um, Coldfield? No. Sutton Coldfield. Col uh, at Sutton Coldfield. Yeah. Used to share a ground. Um, oh, I don't know them. Romulus. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. 
But don't um don't one of the ladies teams play there. The Aston Villa play there. Aston Villa they ladies. They probably do. Yeah. 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 So uh, Sutton yeah. Coalfield. Where's the other place? Is it is it what is so is it Royal Sutton Coalfield? I don't know if there is Royal. Perhaps it is. I don't. Is know. it? Yeah. Because yeah, obviously I'm thinking it was featured in the in the um uh, in the games in the, the what's that games? I don't know. Commonwealth Games. Two years ago. Um, that's when Birmingham bankrupted itself. Uh, talking of Birmingham, it was great to see the mighty Tottenham Hotspur turning over Aston Villa. They're in Birmingham too. Uh, I knew you were going to mention that. 4-0. <laughs> you know, 4-0. Tremendous. Yeah. And um, they've mentioned the, the England team, or they, they've picked the squad this afternoon. I looked at it and, uh, yeah, carried on uh, scrolling on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm what not, was the squad then? I don't know. It wasn't really interesting. But England played Brazil in a couple of weeks. Is it? Is it this? It's not this weekend, is it? Surely. No, there's Premier League games on this weekend. So um, yeah, that'll be the next, the next games, the next time. Did they there. pick Ivan Tony then? He is. Yeah. He's, I don't think he should be in the squad. Come on. Mm. You know, it's Same not. More. It's not right, is it? You I know. hope they picked Ollie Watkins. Um, I don't know. Um. Anyways, so yeah, uh, but we'll wait. We'll have to wait and see. I, I, I don't. I don't want to turn it into Greavesy. I watched a, a YouTube clip of um, Jimmy Greaves with Gary Newbon. You know Gary Newbon. Yep. Yep. And they were having an argument on the telly about the fact that uh, this was back in the uh, the eighties when Greavesy was saying, "Look, TV cameras at football grounds, they're a guest, and it isn't up for them to declare whether or not." watching a game of football and a bad tackle should then go to the FA just because they've captured it. Hey, and where are we now? We've got VAR, um, which was another comment that came up because I was on the BBC on Monday night in a non-league show. Goes out at six o'clock on, on BBC Red Northampton, non-league show. And they try and capture all the non-league uh, clubs around Northamptonshire. It's quite a good listen. And it's quite pacey, so it's all right. But I did mention then that um, obviously the last time Market Harvey Town were here in the final moments, Jordan Crawford went for a dive, <laughs> uh, went for a, a top, a top, top dive off the off the top beam and uh, won a penalty, which cost the game. Um, but if VAR had seen that, obviously it w he would have probably picked up a card and it wouldn't have been a penalty. So uh, if you if you want that in non-league football, um, you can have it, but um, I don't think we've got the money to do it. Frankly, the first thing the FA need to do is allow everybody uh, the chance to have free Wi-Fi in the stands, if, um, uh, certainly for the press and for anybody here. That yeah. would help us all. I think that would be very useful. And uh, therefore, the FA would get all the goals and all their scores come in a lot more quicker than waiting for people to still phone them up and all that kind of gubbins. But yeah. uh, who am I? I'm just a bloke on a box in a really cold shed. <laughs> in front of a sponsor's board. I mean, if, you, if your name's on this sponsor's board, you haven't paid us. Pay us! So, yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? It would do, yeah. Yeah, very much so. No worries. Um, I'm still here and I'm moving. You, you're not dead. No. Not dead yet. No, no. Right. Who said, said this? Remarkable kind I of statement. I have no idea. Oh, right. I have no idea. I'm like you, though. Oh. You know, just... I'm alive and... Most of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. alive and kicking. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, it's all it's all good. But what are you doing after the game tonight? This isn't a chat-up line, ladies and gentlemen. Just beware. It's not a chat-up line. Michael, what are you doing after this podcast tonight? What are you going to do? Well, this evening... I'm going to have a chat with some of the first team players. And then you're going to put them on this podcast later? This will be in this podcast. So at some point, it will just disappear and then reappear. Ah, so uh, yeah, well, we'll look forward to that as Michael talks to some of the players, of course. That's always interesting. Which players do you think you might be talking to? Oh, I don't know which ones I can get. It depends. On, I would really like to speak to Callan. Callum Thomas? Yes. He's scored a couple of good goals this season, hasn't he? He, he has, yeah. He, he has. And uh, ask him about, you know, what it's like really being back at Corby Town. And, uh, of course, he did score against Market Harbour when they, were, when they played here. 
Yeah, probably one of the goals of the season. Yeah, wasn't it? took it well, took it well. Yeah. And uh, as you say, it's his second uh, occasion back at Corby Town. He was here a long time ago and uh, he's back again, which makes me think that uh, we probably haven't mentioned Bev Ironmonger, who was with the club for a very long time, goes back to the Occupation Road days and, of course, to the Triangle days. Bev, for those that don't know, passed away a week ago. And, um, yeah, condolences go out to his family and friends. Uh, but he was kind of... I believe it's true to say he never actually played for Corby Town. He was in the reserves as a young lad, but he came back and he was the trainer. He was a second in command, wasn't he? He was he was a scout. Um, he was wasn't a coach. He involved in the youth team. Yeah, heavily involved in the youth team and the youth side of it. So, uh, and and I did see that there was lots of kind of people really saddened by the fact that he passed away on social media because he was such a kind of help to everybody, yeah. every young footballer that yeah. went through his, it, yeah, it, through his squads. So, um, yeah, we, we pass on our regards there. And, um, yeah, it, it's a terrible loss. I know he's been ill for a long time, but uh, he used to love his football and coming up here and sitting in the, in the boardroom with, um, with some of the older members of our, our supporters club. And I was at I was at a funeral the other day of, of another longtime supporter, Colin Reed, who's got a, a season ticket holder up here at Steel Park. He'll be sadly missed. He sits just in front of the press box. I know him quite well. And um, a very nice send-off, um, though they did have uh, emblazoned on the screens in the funeral parlour a, a, a quite horrible badge. I would have thought, as a Corby Town supporter and season ticket holder, maybe the badge of Corby Town might have been emblazoned up on the screen, but no, they went with a badge of his uh, the team that he supports that play in the Premiership. Oh, yeah, it was. It was not nice <laughs> badge. It was, it was horrible, but um, but obviously. Um, we shout out to all his, his friends and family and uh, I know his his his, his his wife will be going off to Spain for a bit of uh, uh, recuperation and uh, you know to to chill a bit it's it's a horrible thing to lose uh, when you've been married that long so um, thoughts and prayers and well not yeah but all that kind of governance goes out to all those people um, I think there's a couple of, um, what's the word? A couple of uh, hot, uh, birthdays coming up. But we'll wait until we're here back at the ground in in, in the end of March. 23rd of March, is it? Is it the 23rd? Something like that. Six yeah. plus seven. 23, I think. Uh, Does we play on the 16th? Uh, yeah, well, Saturday's the 16th, yeah. isn't it? So the following weekend will be the 23rd. There, there you go. So uh, I'm good at maths. I've got one of those O-levels. And um, we'll also wait and see what happens there. But, uh, yeah, great to see. And we've mentioned that. You've got a nice picture there as well. I have. And I'll put this on the screen. This is of Phil Toon. Uh, obviously, Chuck said earlier, the uh, the new manager of the ladies' team. And, uh, Are you going to blow that up and put it up big on the screen? Yeah, I will do, yeah. He looks very nice holding his shirt up. A bit wet, though. It's a bit damp yeah. out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Got a bit of news about myself. Oh. Yeah. About oh, myself. breaking. Breaking news, ladies breaking and gentlemen. Breaking well, not really. Um, once again, um, as you may know, I get quite involved with the youth team at Corby and sometimes other. And I've been asked again to film all the youth team finals for the North Fence Senior Youth League. Excellent. For about the fifth or sixth year in a row. Excellent. Good work. And what happens with all that filming? That filming goes straight to the league, or I put it out on my own site, which I do put some games out, and it's called Lawsy Footy. Excellent. So we'll be able to watch some of that as well. But that will feature, obviously, uh, heavily Corby Town, you team. If they get to the finals. There you go. Yeah. Um, this... They have got a League Cup semi final coming up against Blackstones, and I still don't know whether it's home and away yet. So we'll wait and see for that, and we'll stay our tuned to our screens. We will indeed. Um, and Chuck's just going to tell you what a wonderful person I am, because that's what he wants to do. <laughs> why, why am I doing that? What, what have I done now? Because I want to look some up on my phone. Ah, right, OK. So what he's asking, really, ladies and gentlemen, listener, watcher, viewer, um, is can I fill for about 30 seconds on this particular <laughs> phone, uh, on this particular camera? It's not a phone, it's a real camera in the real studio with real lights. Uh, and he just wants me to fill 
and busk up to the point where he's found what he's actually looking for. Um, so I'll try and do that as best I can. Um, you know, I could go back and talk about maybe some history of Corby Town and the different pitches that we've had to play on in the three different grounds that we've played at. Obviously, it was a fairly large pitch at Occupation Road. Some of our younger viewers won't be aware of that. It was a very heavy clay pitch. Then we moved to the triangle. Um, it was very sandy, um, but it had a good foundation and it drained very well. And now we're up here at Steel Park um, and it's suffered quite a bit this year, but we're still playing on the pitch. But at the weekend, we'll be on plastic. There you go. Have you found it? I'm back. Well done. Yes, uh, and I hit that. Um, on the 21st of the 3rd, uh, the youth team are away at Russell Corinthians in the league this time. The last game was in the cup. This one's in the league. And then the, they've rescheduled the other game that was called off the other night against Rothwell Corinthians here for the 25th of the 3rd. Why don't they play them all on one day and play for th three and a half hours? <laughs> Switch around at half time. And, and then, then again at halftime. And then after those two games, Corby will have six games left. And I believe only one of them are at home. So they're going to have to go on the road and do it the hard way. They've got to go to Ketron away, um, uh, Blackstone's away, Diamond's away. Um, no. Stanford. No, they, they're the only team so far to take four points off Stanford. Wow. This year, they played their home and away. So, yep. So they've got a hard run in, but, you know, fingers crossed. Oh, FC Peterborough, that's the other team, the one that they beat 12-0 the uh, other day. There you go. And um, you've shared those those goals out, haven't you? I have, yeah. I put them on the last podcast. Um, I didn't put them out, you know, so please check out the last podcast and have a look and enjoy them if you're a youth player go back to the last podcast you can find it here in the list if you look for things on the corby town tv page and you can check it out there and then you can share it and like it and let all your friends know and uh, then you'll one day you'll be a star and it'll be picked up by sky and they'll go and this is when he was playing at corby town and um it'll make some money yep <laughs> so we wrap it up yeah. yeah so what you're going to do now we're going to cut to um, you interviewing some of the players at training yep well what we're going to do is we're going to do all this oh without pulling wires out no we're not going to do that we'll just uh, yeah we'll end it some way shall we shall we yeah alright then so in that case watch the next bit I'm going to go Michael's going to chat to some footballers and we'll see you around the grounds and outside in the rain this time, as you can see, we've got Callum Thomas. Hi, guys. How are you? Are you all good? Callum, um, thanks for coming in and uh, having a chat with us. Um, you're back. Yeah. How has it been second time around? Yeah, so back home, seeing it when I first joined, it said on the post back home, and it does, I, I enjoy being here. Uh, from obviously when I came, I was probably only about 19, 20. And then coming back more of a season pro, it's not much has changed. Fan base is still really big, and yeah, I enjoy playing it. Yeah, and um, one of the things is, you know, um, you seem like a fit guy. Is is that kind of like your daily job or your yeah, you know, so, regular job? Yeah, so I'm a personal trainer. Uh, I do that part time as well as football. So yeah, being it, fitness is a big part of my life. So doing that give it a bit onto the lads as well making sure they they're into their fitness and make sure they're doing the stretches or, um but yeah it's a big part of my life yeah me and chuck were talking earlier on and we reckon that um <laughs> you probably got one of the contenders for goal of the season when you scored against harbour here yeah well i say we're playing them this saturday so yeah that game i just enjoy the big games now i like to thrive and then try and get on the ball and i actually played left wing back that game and I didn't mind as long as I was playing. And I just really, when we went 1-0 down, or yeah, when we went 1-0 down, I just really wanted, oh, it was actually 2-0 down. I just really wanted to get us back into that, be that guy to really lift it. So when I got the ball, I knew first thoughts what I'm going to do. 
shoot and yeah I was buzzing that it went top corner so yeah that's definitely one for the archives now <laughs> <laughs> and not long ago actually well when I came here the first time I scored one like that against Brackley and a few of the fans were saying they remember that one so that was good yeah yeah um what a, a lot of people probably don't realize is when you left Colby the first time um what other clubs did you move on did you play at a higher level at any yeah time? so when I went when we it was unfortunate we got relegated that season uh, I actually played quite a few games and had a um, strong season personally. So I actually got a move to Boston United uh, and then had a strong season there and then actually got a move to Solly Moors in the Conference Premier. And yeah, I enjoyed it. Football's going really well. And uh, yeah, I had a, good, had a good spell there and then went to Kettering after that. And then from there to Colville Town. And it's been okay. a, it's been and a then good from there to here again, yeah. Yeah, so I had a brief spell at Ilkeston, but yeah, uh, and at Kings Lynn, brief spells there. But yeah, from there, I was just really enjoying my football and things like that. And how as I get older now, things are changing, and being here just suits me perfectly. Now um, we're going to talk briefly about that season, that remarkable yes. season we had in two thousand. Yeah, title winning. Do you remember an awful lot about that? Oh, like, Millsy coming back to the club recently, it's like, we, all we do is just talk about, like, the old times, because it's one of them. Them seasons, you don't forget them. Like, for me, I was, as I say, I was probably 20, 20 years old, winning their title. I just thought football was easy. Coming, coming from non-league first uh, real season with season pros, um, yeah, you don't you don't get things like that. Honestly, the whole season, the ups, the downs, and obviously, we, I think it was about eight or nine points off yeah, um, yeah. at Christmas, and we we're just saying we're just staying around it, staying around it, and to finally do it on that last day, and everyone knows how we did it because uh, they Paul only needed the draw. It was uh, last oh, it was it was, mad, it? it was mad. It was mad. It's like stuff like that. You can't write it. You can't write it. And I, one of my good friends, Harvey Pepe. I see him quite often and literally we compare football always to that season. He's still playing, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's recently, well, he was at Barwell Town after his injury and then now he's gone back to Colville playing. Oh, OK. But yeah, he's one of my good friends. So yeah, we, we'll always compare football to that season. I would say he was actually younger than me. He was about 18 and he said, you just think that's football. And it's if I remember, didn't we get him on loan, loan. from somebody? Yeah, yeah, from Leicester City. Yeah, it was yeah. a loan. Yeah. And he, he just said like, you can't, you can't beat things like that. And no. Honestly, yeah, honestly, I was going to say, like, you can't... I've not had that since, that kind of being around that team and even the players now, you've got players like Shane Byrne and Ben Milne, Milne's doing, like, it's still playing high level, so it shows how good that team was. Yeah, yeah excellent. Because um, I guess thinking on that, um, going back to that, year we won the league mm. um, one of the most pivotal games and I remember it quite well was when we beat Poole here 1-0 yeah and that was oh, around yeah. Christmas time and, that's and, when and that's, Cleveland and Taylor got the like, yeah, oh, yeah. oh that was unreal when it just dropped to him I say I remember everything that's just dropped to him in the edge of the box and he's just he's just sitting here the celebration yeah, the celebration yeah you ran yeah. all the way across the main stand yeah I mean, that's it, it I remember it, it. Phenomenal. yeah that was huge because Paul it was always like Paul and Weymouth were our two hardest games and Paul I think that season we didn't even actually ever lose to Paul we only drew and lost um, and drew and won so yeah it was one of them where yeah, that, that game was huge. And to get that goal off Cleveland and Taylor was unreal. I think I was playing left back that game as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I just ran straight into him. I was knee sliding the lot. <laughs> yeah, so. Anyways, we thank you very much for coming in and having a brief chat with us. Yeah, and no uh, I hope you supporters have enjoyed this because Cal's a real legend of the club. Yeah, I'm a bit older. Ten years later, I'm a bit older now. But yeah, a lot more experience. So now hopefully keep going and keep doing good things, especially Saturday. We hope so, don't That's we? That's it. So, stay tuned. This is Corporate Town TV, and we'll see you back here, same place, same time, next time. Um, from me, Chuck, good night. And from him, Michael. Michael, do not forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the share button, and any other button that you see on the YouTube page, just click it. <laughs> really? Is there that many buttons? Buttontastic YouTube. No, don't forget our other social media outlets, which are Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, 
TikTok, and there's another one in there, and I can't remember what yeah. it is. But, uh, certainly, you know, if you're looking for details on games on game day, use Twitter. Uh, somebody contacted the Corby Town TV page on chat. Um, if you need any details on the buses, go to the Facebook page and the Black and White Army. That's who runs that. One other bit of news that I'd like to say, and Chuck doesn't know about this yet, but um, I've now worked something out which is going to be highly beneficial to what me and Chuck do. Basically, we now have the capacity, if people do not want to come into the studio, we can record them remotely and they can talk to us and we record it in here. So therefore it goes out as a podcast as if they were in the studio. Excellent. Good work. See, it's changing, developing and getting bigger and better every week. Not everybody wants to sit in front of a camera. Why? Don't know. Surely it's just like sitting in front of a mirror. And I know some most people do that, especially footballers. Oh, wow. They love a bit of it, don't they? Yep. And if you're going to speak to Callan Thomas, he thinks of himself as a bit of a, a model. Um, <laughs> quite frankly, I think the only modelling he'll be doing is with an Airfix aeroplane kit. Anyways... <laughs> I think I'm joking, we can Carl. draw this episode to a close, Chuck. Lovely. Right then. Uh, see you next time somewhere in football. Good night. Night.